welcome to all. Happy or sad, rejoicing or grieving, doubting or believing, however you are this night, here is good news. To us is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. His name is Jesus, which means liberator, rescuer, deliverer. His life changed the world. His living presence changes us today. Let us pray. O oh, surprising and faithful God, we have been waiting for this evening, wondering about your coming. Will you enter as a mighty ruler with an enormous army? Will you arrive as an astute politician, able to maneuver influential minds? Will you rise to popularity as a charismatic dynamo with adoring fans in every corner of the world? Or is it true that you come in the most helpless life form as a newborn infant, poor, vulnerable, dependent? How can this be? How can your reign possibly begin with a messy birth in a humble hut? But here you come with a, with a grasping voice of new birth and you invite us to reimagine God power from the downside up. Thank you for inviting us here into your birthday room. Thank you for finding a deeper, more enduring way. Let, Let your, your birth, birth cries penetrate, penetrate our, our minds and hearts. hearts. Bless this, this celebration, celebration, and may we, like Mary, continue, continue to ponder all those things. things. In gratitude, gratitude and, and with, with wonder, wonder we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand and join in singing, O come all ye faithful. more to the story told of one who was born on this earth, who ministered to the poor, the rejected, and the brokenhearted, who died speaking truth to power, and whose death signified not the end, but a transformation awaiting all who give their lives, even as he did, to God's vision for the well-being of this world. In the 
those days to a decree. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should re be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quintius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. There were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, for you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel with the multitudes of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom it favors.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. again on Christmas Eve after being apart last year. I admit to you when I uh, imagined last Christmas what this year would be like, while vaccines were definitely part of my hope, Omicron was not. Omicron has changed plans for some, keeping some loved ones apart. There are plenty of people who are dealing with difficulties that have nothing to do with COVID. And nearly everyone I know is feeling tired and weary and worn down by it all. This has just been so, so hard. But we're here together tonight. And for that, I give thanks to God. Partly because of the weariness, I have one more reading for us tonight. It is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah according to the Gospel of Matthew, the first 17 verses of the first chapter, and I am reading from Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message, because if you know what I am about to inflict upon you, you may be bewildered that I'm going to do it. But here it is. The family tree of Jesus Christ, David's son, Abraham's son. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had Judah and his brothers. Judah had Perez and Zerah. The mother was Tamar. Perez had Hezron. 
Hezron had Aram. Aram had Aminadab. Aminadab had Nashon. Nashon had Salmon. Salmon had Boaz. His mother was Rahab. Boaz had Obed. Ruth was his mother. Obed had Jesse. Jesse had David. And David became king. David had Solomon. Uriah's wife was the mother. Solomon had Rehoboam. Rehoboam had Abijah. Abijah had Asa. Asa had Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat had Joram. Joram had Uzziah. Uzziah had Jotham. Jotham had Ahaz. Ahaz had Hezekiah. Hezekiah had Manasseh. Manasseh had Amon. Amon had Josiah. Josiah had Jehoiakim and his brothers. And then the people were taken into the Babylonian exile. When the Babylonian exile ended, Jeconiah had Shealtiel, Shealtiel had Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel had Abiud, Abiud had Eliakim, Eliakim had Azor, Azor had Zadok, Zadok had Akam, Akam had Eliud, Eliud had Eliezer, Eliezer had Mathen, Mathen had Jacob, Jacob had Joseph, we're almost there, Mary's husband, the Mary who gave birth to Jesus, the Jesus who was called Christ. There were 14 generations from Abraham to David, another 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and yet another 14 from the Babylonian exile to Christ. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God, am I right? Yeah. Why did I just do that to you? Was it to impress you with my ability to speak difficult names? Maybe. The truth is, except for the story of the three magi, which is an epiphany story, which is read on or around January 6th, not a Christmas story. Notice there are no wise men at this manger scene. I generally ignore Matthew's gospel in December. Give me Luke, and Luke's focus on Mary and angels and shepherds any day. But this year, this year I read a reflection by Kathleen Norris about Matthew's genealogy that was just what I needed to hear. Although it was published in 2007, what she wrote then seemed timely for 2021. That on Christmas Eve, when we are invited to sing and rejoice and feast because Christ is the Word made flesh and dwells among us, often we are too exhausted to do so, really. If ever there was a Christmas Eve to feel almost too exhausted to rejoice, this is it. Or maybe it's just me, but this is it for me. I'm tired. I'm tired. Kathleen Norris writes, If we have neglected the spiritual call of Advent and become thoroughly frazzled by December 24th, all is not lost. We are, in fact, in very good shape for Christmas. It is precisely because we are weary and poor in spirit that God can touch us with hope. Tonight we are asked to acknowledge that the world we have made is in darkness. We are asked to be attentive and keep vigil for the light of Christ. We and our world are broken. It is only God, through Jesus Christ, who can make us whole again. So believe it or not, this is where that reading from Matthew comes in. Now, I'm guessing you probably didn't recognize many of the names, except maybe Jehoshaphat, right? And think, oh, that's where Jehoshaphat came from, yeah? I don't recognize all of the names. Um, However, of the ones that I do, Considering that this was an introduction to someone about to be born in Matthew's Gospel, who was presented as the Christ, as the Messiah, they, it, is, was, it was a surprising choice. Take, for instance, the women, the few women who were mentioned. Tamar, a young woman, was widowed before she had children, and she pretended to be a sex worker in order to get pregnant by her father-in-law, Judah, because Judah were one of the few, prote- sorry, because children were one of the few protections available to women. And as a widowed, childless woman, she was vulnerable. And the law was on Tamar's side in this scenario. Rahab was also, she was a sex worker and a foreigner who helped the Israelites when they came to tear down the walls of Jericho, the city where she lived. 
Ruth was merely a foreigner who emigrated to Bethlehem because she was devoted to her mother-in-law and her own fortunes were not so great and she had nothing better to do. Uriah's wife is Bathsheba, and that may be a name that you know, the woman who, with whom King David fell in love or lust when he saw her bathing on the roof from his own rooftop. And when she became pregnant, David had Uriah killed in order to cover up his own misdeed. Obviously, as David's example makes clear, the males in this genealogy are hardly saints. The names who follow David, all of them kings, are a mixed bag of pretty good guys and, frankly, villains, but mostly fallible humans, every one. It is because of the faithlessness of the majority of them that the armies of Babylon sacked Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and led the artisans and upper-class citizens in chains to live in exile in Babylon. By beginning his gospel with this genealogy and including all the skeletons in the family closet, Matthew offered to his audience then and to us today a message of hope and encouragement. When it comes to God's purposes for the world, God can and will use anyone willing to respond to God's call. No one is excluded. No one is outside of the promise. Because God can use anything and everything for good, including, lucky for us, the wide variety of human dysfunction. I don't know about you, but that sounds like and feels like good news to me. The world, you may have noticed, is a bit of a mess. Truthfully, many of us are feeling a bit of a mess. I've already confessed that to you. I am feeling a bit of a mess. Perhaps you are as well. But we are not alone. Because the child born this night is Emmanuel. That's another thing that Matthew gave us, which means God with us. With us in all things. The good, the bad, the ugly, the seemingly unbearable. With us no matter what we have done or think we have done or what is done to us. With us when we are feeling exhausted and weary. May we this night open our hearts to the gift of the Christ child born among us. May we this night and all through the year allow him to fill us, to comfort us, to heal us, to use us, to lead us. Amen.
just a, f a few words uh, as we get ready to take the offering, although we're not actually going to pass offering plates because that's one of the things that we don't do in COVID, but there is a basket at the back of the, of the sanctuary. And if you feel so um, moved to make an offering, any, any offering that is made tonight will be given to local and international um, mission uh, opportunities. I'm thinking of the uh, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is already on the ground doing work in um, Kentucky and other parts of the s that swath that was struck by tornadoes just about four weeks ago. Um, and also our, our local Southeast Lynn, we'll, we will support them as well. Um, we are about to enter into the candlelight portion of our service. Hopefully you saw the baskets of candles. Um, at, at the entrance there and at the back of the sanctuary. Did everybody get one? If you did not, um, you may at this time just wave your hand and we've got folks who are, who are willing to deliver them to you. Um, we have wax candles and then there's also for children, there's a battery operated one if you would prefer that. Okay. Also, if you, um, in the bulletin, we have a listing of, of um, for whom and in, in whose memory or in whose honor uh, poinsettias were, were given, we have a few extra. And if you would like to take a poinsettia to your home or to someone else, and it would bring them joy, um, if you purchase one, you get first dibs. But, but I do not love when beautiful flowers die a sad and lonely death in the sanctuary. So I would encourage you to empty the sanctuary of poinsettias tonight. So keep that in mind as well. And you don't need to worry about them freezing on the way home. With thankfulness, friends, we give in gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With hopefulness, we give in commitment to God.
Let us pray our thanks together. Gracious God, you have shown your great love for your children by using commonplace things for your purpose. Water to mark your children, bread and wine to feed and nourish us, the ordinary people to be disciples, a child in a manger to announce your grace. Take these commonplace things, these gifts of paper and metal and lives that share behind them. Bless and use them to proclaim your gracious love. For we offer them in the name of Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word was God. He was made in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came to in being. With this came to life, he came in his life, And into the world he brought the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and overcomes the shadow. is that hope which tenaciously clings to the hearts of the faithful and announces in the face of any hair the world can produce and all the indoors slammed in our faces and all the dark nights of our souls that with God all things still are possible 
that even now, unto us, a child is born. And let's sing Joy to the World, and I think you have to stand for that. <laughs> and that gets Julia to the organ. of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Amen. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Joe. Merry Christmas. 